Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Junior Down. This is Uncommon Sense. Thank you for joining us today. My guests today are Gopi and Lakshmi Bungarala. Gopi is a financial advisor with Thutterfield Financial. He is the financial advisor for the Saginaw Chippewa Indian Tribe, along with many other private investors. Gopi earned his master's degree in finance from the University of Texas. He also earned a master's degree in chemical engineering from the University of New Hampshire. Gopi's latest venture is the opening of his new franchise, Cherry Berry Self-Serve Frozen Yogurt in downtown Midland. It is the first Cherry Berry Yogurt franchise in Michigan. Lakshmi has worked at Central Michigan University as a grant accountant, which she left last year to participate in Gopi's latest venture. So welcome Gopi and welcome Lakshmi. Thank it's a pleasure you. to have you here. So what got you into Cherry Berry, and what is Cherry Berry, actually? Um, well, the reason why I got into Cherry Berry, Lakshmi and I have been talking for some time, and you know, she works, she used to work at Central Michigan University, and her whole summers are, were tied up with audits, and summer is kind of the slow time for me. So I've been telling her, like, we cannot go take vacation with our kids anywhere. So she said, okay, let me get home. So we've been for the last, six, seven years basically getting her completely out of debt. So we want to bring her home. And as I was doing it two years ago, I was in Oklahoma where Sarafield is based. And one of my colleagues, his wife was a teacher and she quit her job and started Cherry Berry um, to basically you know, support her income and also find something to do. And so when I looked at the concept and then I came home and I shared it with Lakshmi and I said, what do you think about it? She said, Okay, <laughs> because she, I'm the more of the risk taker. I'm always looking for things to do, um, but most importantly, usually, I, I when I get something, I share it with her, and also I take it to prayer, and and usually I know very soon if that's where I need to go. I, I don't, or I shouldn't go, because before I knew the Lord, I went to multiple ventures that I shouldn't have gone. I spent enormous amount of time with no results and caused a lot of friction in my life, in my married life. So I, I, I haven't done, I do not want to do it and I will not go there anymore. And so as I was praying, I felt really strong peace that I need to do this. So, and I brought it to her about a, two years ago and she looked at me and said, now is not the time. So I said, okay. And so I still was in prayer because I knew this is what you told me to do. And this uh, March, I told her, I said, I'm getting it strong again. What do you think? And she said, yep, it's time. So that's what we, why we brought that. And when I pray, I also the Lord, where do you want me to go? And so we looked at a couple of locations, Midland Mall and the downtown. And I, from a commercial point of view, the Midland Mall looked good. But then we, as we started talking, I said, we want something that's more family oriented, mm -hmm. where kids can go have fun, but th at the same time, people of all ages of all, from all denominations can come, have a good time. We know, you know, we want to make a profit, but at the same time, we want to be a place where families can come, um, enjoy time and relax and do the thing at the same time, enjoying a good product that's healthy. And coming to why we chose Cherry Berry, I did a lot of research on the product that they bring and what their business uh, uh, goals were and things. Their goals were basically be clean, be friendly, be healthy and it really ministered to me and I basically said that's what we want we want to run a clean store where we sell a healthy product so we have the cherry berry the product is made out of uh, frozen yogurt not powder so with powder what you do is you lose a lot of the nutrients a mm. lot of the good probiotics are lost because when you do vacuum dehydration basically you're breaking down the chemical chain the nutrients and also the bacteria are dead you cannot reconstitute it back with the frozen product, 
um, you have all of those and you can add more good probiotics. So cherry berry was the only one that had the extra uh, new, um, bacteria that basically helps with uh, people who have cholesterol issues, we have uh, food allergies and things like that. So it kind of helps them by lining the, the intestine, I mean the stomach Interesting. and all those things. So It's made so of real milk. Yeah, real it's milk. milk not, yeah. not milk powder. Uh, <coughs> the, uh, the, I understand from you have some gluten-free and dairy-free. What is dairy-free made out of? Dairy-free is basically, it's a sorbet. So you basically have natural flavors. Um, ba with it, some, it's basically not, it's not a milk-based uh, thing. It's more of a water-based, you know, that's used to do that. So, but it provides the same. If you look at a lot of these sorbets that you buy, uh, they're very chunky and they're not creamy. Yeah. And so, but this one is more of a smooth because we use natural liquids. We use a, um, basically a Splenda, uh, which is a more of a sugar cane, natural ingredient, not, not one of those other ones, aspartame and other things which is actually more harmful to your, to your body. And so, so we basically, so that's one of the reasons we bought. And again, it goes back to one of the things we have is um, our son is recovering from autism and he has a, uh, he's been on basically gluten-free and casein-free diet for since he was two and he's now 12 years old. And it's very difficult to find desserts that are of good yes. quality, um, that are tasty, Mm -hmm. um, you know, in a you know friendly atmosphere, where you know with where they can he can mingle with other kids, and so that's one of the reasons why we did with uh, cherry berry. We have 21 different flavors. We have all of it. All of them are low low fat, uh, or no fat. All of them are either low sugar or no sugar. Mm. And so, and then we have uh, we always make sure we carry at least one or two uh, no sugar added, a at least one or two of the dairy free. Right. And so, and what happens at the end of the day? Do you keep the product, or is it thrown out? How, how, what, whatever's in the machines? Sure, we basically most of it is in the frozen state. In okay. the frozen state, they're good up to nine months. Okay. And what we have is we have a, a three-door freezer where we can hold about 216 gallons of different product, oh. and then we have about uh, five other different freezers where we can hold about and the 300 gallons. And so what we do is basically three to four days before we put it into the machine, we move them from the freezer to the refrigerator. It takes roughly between three to four days of thawing. So we let it go through the natural thawing process and then we put it into the machines. The machines can hold up to four gallons of product. So we'll keep those in the, in the machine. And in the night what we do is we basically turn the machine into what we call it as a standby mode where it's held below 41 degrees and it's basically held in a liquid state. And in the morning, we turn it back into the auto state, and basically the front part of the machine is where the, actually the product is frozen. So there's only about half a gallon of product that is frozen at any given time. So as the product is consumed, more of the liquid flows in from the back to, to get it frozen. Do you add water to this frozen product or just unfreeze it? It's just unfreezing it, because when you add water, it's very difficult to get a good consistency. Um, oh. So when it's frozen, it's already pre-made from the factory yes. with a good consistency. Yeah. And so and so we just basically all we're doing is thawing it and putting it in. And also basically it also minimizes human interaction because anytime you add oh. human interaction to it, you're adding, there's always chance Bacteria. for contamination and other things. So, we, so everybody who works in the back well, has gloves at on time, aprons, and has so there's no contamination at any, at any uh. given time. And because we our demand, the demand for this is so great. We've been really blessed that every time you put in it, it keeps moving, so That's we don't good. have to really store anything. We just keep adding new ones. And did you um, <coughs> do any pre-opening uh, advertising or contacting anybody in the area? Um, one of the things we did we both of us in our prayer while I was praying we felt to really go strong into the community and say we, that we are partners we we are here to make a profit but at the same time we want to give back to the community because our son has received so much from from different organizations mm -hmm. in Midland you know he is recurring from autism so the community center has been a real blessing where he loves to swim um, mm -hmm. he loves to you know go on the gymnastics and then the arc of Midland. Uh, 
really has helped them with you know with the I can bike, mm -hmm. and uh, so our always so we always wanted to make it a point that whatever we do, that we give these special kids a place, and mm -hmm. also to give back to support them, and at the same time also wanted to give back to families. Lately, mm -hmm. seems to be there's an assault on families. Yeah. That there's not a place for uh, families to come together, sit down, and have a meal or have a dessert and just talk, you know. And so we, we, that's what we wanted to provide. And so we basically went to all the uh, daycare centers, the schools, uh, the soccer stadium, the gymnastics, and all the churches. And basically we told them that we want to be a part of you. And we are here to help them with the fundraiser you know, donations, you know, so that's what, you know, we want to be part of what, what is good, what is family, and. Who trains you, does the, the <coughs> senior company train you? I mean, finance is not <laughs> frozen yogurt. Right. right. They do give you some direction, they say, to get involved in the community. Yeah. And, but we've been, you know, we've been very strong in, in our church, and I think about giving back to the community. That's yes. always been my thing. I mean, I came here, in 86, put $10 in my hand. And uh, this country has been a blessing. Yeah, that's And I want to give back. Yeah. Yes. The training also, what we had, we, we also went to other uh, Cherry Berry locations and, and opened up their store and uh, went through the whole process there and had a one week training here and there and learned different aspects of the business of doing the self-serve yogurt business and then we brought home that knowledge and then either tried to make it even better um, and we're still in the process of making it better. So we did have somewhat hands-on experience with them and then bringing that home to our Cherry Berry location in Michigan. Okay. You're con continuing your financial uh, uh, business. Yes. Yeah, I still do that. Well, actually, do you running the place then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I've always been the one, I think, and I think I have, I'm one of those, you know, high energy, I have a lot of ideas, and and so I kind of put the, the vision out there, and she's the one who basically actually drives it. She's the one who gives more clarity to that vision, and more step by step. I think we work very well as a team, you know, I'm the one who's out in the front kind of throwing ideas, but a lot of times I'm like, okay, what's the next step, and <laughs> that next step is her, is she gives me that that putting it, that, that vision into the detail. Well, it seems like you have a wonderful partnership and you've also been tested with your son. Right. That was, yeah. how did you find out what was necessary to help him? Um, I think it was a lot of internet research, you know, went there and then a lot of sacrifice and a lot of prayer, you know, and uh, we found a doctor in Traverse City out of prayer, we through different connections, we found this doctor in Traverse City and he basically, he, he was not taking any more patients, but we prayed and my wife persisted in calling him like about, I think 20 or 30 times. And finally he called us and he basically said, um, you mom, you've been calling me and pestering my staff. <laughs> For six months. Um, how, how can I get rid of you? That was, you know, <laughs> in so a nice so way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we, we told him this easy way to get rid of me is by seeing my son and you see him for, and he's, he asked me what my story was, so I gave him um, a story, a five year worth of story in five minutes, and I told him then, he said, okay, let's meet you guys, and then that's, since then we've been going to him, and um, we treat my, our son with biomedical treatment. He's chemical free for 10 years now. He's the most healthiest child in our house, um, but he's a high maintenance kid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he went basically from running around, you know, banging his head, you know, and going to party about 10 times a day at the minimum. And he was basically, as soon as he went, you basically had to clean him up. Otherwise, he would take that and <laughs> throw it on the, on, the, on, the, on the carpet or on the walls. And we spent nights cleaning up with no sleep. And then he would bang his head. And so we basically had to sleep for almost two years with holding his hands and being awake because that, because of the, we didn't know because he was on regular diet. And this doctor and through our thing, we finally found completely gluten and casein free. And one of the things we found was a lot of the ingredients, they say 4% other ingredients. Right. And oh. if anything is below 4%, they don't have to disclose yes. to you right. what's in there. And so what a lot of times you see in the main Super. ingredients, there's no gluten, but when you call the 
the manufacturers, they say, oh, here's all the things. Plus, yeah. it might have been made in a facility that had nuts. And you had to be really researchers. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> we actually had to quit our jobs. To do, to do yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when you were raised in India, what, what emphasis was, was I, I have a couple of Indian friends and they said, listen, it's very strict in our house. Doctor or engineer, that's it. Right. You have no choice except those two. Yes. What values did your parents raise you with? Um, with me, um, I lost my dad when I was uh, like, like 11 years old and he drank a lot and so and he was a good man he worked hard and so he always instilled in me that that you know, that you need to, to get ahead you need to work hard yeah. and you need to be honest you need to have integrity and you need to be bold and he also told me uh, to take risks i mean when i was i think nine years old he basically gave me a bunch of money and said go to the market and buy steel <laughs> and I looked at my uncle and I said, what is he doing? It's like, I'm nine years old. Right. And he said, that's what he did to me, so just do it. And I didn't realize that he had already set up what needed to be done, but he needed to see what I will do. So I got in a auto rickshaw, went to the market, and went to the man he told me to. And I said, here's what my dad said. He said, how much and which one? And he kind of tried to confuse me, and I still saying, well, the last one, I finally found a way to tell him what I needed. And I did the deal, and then finally, after it was done, my dad was sitting in the back, and they both were laughing and said, "Okay, you passed the test." <laughs> so um, that kind of helped me to be really bold and go into areas where sometimes you don't have the complete answers. Yes. And so, and then also to uh, put your goals higher. Mm -hmm. And so, so I was always good. I liked engineering, and I always was good with uh, math. And so. So my aim was basically from that, I guess very early in, was to be an engineer. And I said, okay, I'll get into the state school where you don't have to pay much money and then come here for my master's. That was been always been my goal. And so that's why, that's why I, I guess there was no other focus. You know, I played cricket, but either I was on the field playing cricket or I was home studying, getting ready for the next step. You know, you gotta have a big exam on the 10th grade and I was pretty much in the top, and then we went to the 12th grade, got pretty much in the top grade, and then I got, wrote the exam for the, uh, for the engineering uh, seats, basically one in thousand get in. Mm. And so you have to be pretty much, you have a 120 exams, and you get 100 minutes to do it. And so yeah. you basically have, I think you have to be within plus or minus three of the top mark. So. The educational system is designed for hard work and you know you have to be challenged and you have to get into the competitive uh, field so everyone is competing for the same thing and the population is high so we have to do our best better than best and, uh, and that's been drilled into us since our childhood every one of us in every household is you know they draw a vision for you this is what you're going to be and you're going to work hard towards it what did your parents tell you how were you raised well my parents actually were um very easy going with me but at the same time my dad seeing my dad work hard yes um he put himself to uh, in engineering uh, school and did a full-time job and had two kids and he comes from a not so well-to-do family but he brought himself and out and he he basically seeing him work this hard uh, just uh, encouraged me to you know to work harder and uh, get to where I need to be so education is always very it's high importance in our household every one of us have to be have to have at least at least two levels of degree <laughs> how did you two meet each other um, my grandfather and her grandfather are childhood friends mm -hmm. uh, they come from the same village so they um, her mom used to come to our house, um, you know, but I knew her grandfather really well. And so, so they met and I came here to do my master's and then working and then at one point my mom said it's time for you to get married. And <laughs> so, which, you know, it, which is common in India. So I said, okay. And so I was going to, I was getting my green card at that time. So I said, okay, I'll come home and I haven't been home for almost four years. I said, okay, I'll take a two month break and just take time, spend time with my mom. So I went home and then uh, my mom, she didn't even tell me, the same day I came, 
um, we actually we had took a, a blind train, date. Blind date, basically, basically took a train to go to her town to see her, and I was so jet lagged. <laughs> While I was talking to her, I actually fell asleep. <laughs> 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 and but you know, I was tired. And then um, we did, we, you know, the parents did all the talking. We just you know saw each other, and then I came back to the hotel, and I felt like you know I needed to talk to her one on one. And at the same time, she told her uh, dad that you know I would like to meet. And so we went on a you know th three hour date, basically talking about different things. And I basically told her that I'm very independent compared to a lot of mm. you know Indians. I'm I am not one of those that are looking for a career-oriented thing. I am very focused on being driven what's inside me. I said, I have, I have a big dream inside me, and that's what I want to go after. And yeah, so I need somebody that's more, a little more independent, that can function you know, on their own, where they're not looking to me for all the answers. Mm -hmm. And she said, that's fine. And she said, I have only one, one main request. And she said, I follow Jesus. Is that OK with you? And I said, fine. I said, you know, and you know, I was a Hindu at that time, and I said I respected all the religions. I had a lot of friends who were Christians when I was here. Actually, a majority of them, my friends, were all Christians. And I've gone to different churches to be the in Jesus in their, uh, you know, little skits and all because of my skin color. <laughs> they thought it would fit perfectly. So right. I thought, you know, that's fine, you know. And yeah. I felt the warmth of all the people. Yeah. So I had no problem. And then I told my grandma, I said, you know, she wants to be Christian. She said, oh, don't worry. In, over time, will change. <laughs> so we came back. You know, we got married, you know. And then we came here. We lived in Boston. And so Interesting. Yeah. What was your big dream? Did you tell her? Well, I didn't. I, I knew inside me that uh, I didn't want to be just a job. I wanted to create something that would be of value to the people, something I could give back. I always felt inside me that that I wanted to be at a, such a point that I can give. One of the things that really, very young in my age was I could not stand kids being mistreated, kids being not having education, and then women being mistreated. It, it really mm -hmm. always hurt me that, you know, why this this happened? And a lot of times it's, uh, you know, it's because of poverty, it's because of a woman not being, you know, told their worth. In society, respected, respected, yeah. respected. and so it's always driven me. So I always wanted to help, but the only way you can help is when you're well-to-do. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and so always water, drinking water, you know, a lot of times. So, so it's been inside me, and it's always that dream has been there of how to do well, to so to kind of drive it, and also make sure that my kids don't suffer from not having the opportunities or not having mm -hmm. to choose between A and B. Mm -hmm. it's what what values are you trying to instill in your children? Um, I tell I told my daughter is you know sophomore right now, and I told her I said nothing is impossible in this country. I said yes. I yes. came from a country where you have to fight for every single thing. This country provides you the opportunity. This it's is the country with flowing with milk and honey. Yeah, it's a land of milk and honey. Right. So here's the opportunity. Get it. Yeah. Don't ever lose this opportunity. And I told her, I said, how much do you want it? How much of the opportunity? What is your goal? And I said, and I sat, and I sat down with her. And we used to have, like, you know, whenever I could, I could sit down with her. And we would have, you know, father and daughter dates. And we would go out and talk about it. And, and that's what it was. So and in one of her essays, you know, she wrote. And she said, my dad's, you know, single-hearted determination of, like, you know, not letting go of his goals and my mom's perseverance with my son was the driving force. So I think a lot of times kids don't have to be told. I think they watch you. They observe. Yeah. How do you maintain a good relationship? I mean, you have a relationship of, across a broad range of life's activities. Right. Um, I think we always start in the morning, you know, with prayer. Yeah. And, and so we always want direct. And during the day, we talk. Even if it's for two minutes or three minutes, we always talk and we run things On across. On the run, we do it on the run, but we yes. always run across. And I think with now with Cherry Berry, it's given us more time to kind of talk while we're doing things because we're doing things diff together. Whereas if a couple of years ago, you know, I'd be like on my own thing, she'd be at, yeah. at her work, and it was very hard to. But I think, like you mentioned earlier, with our son, going overcoming those challenges brought us together even more. Um, I know it, it is a make or break sort of a relationship, but 
with Anshu, with our son, we had to, we recognized very early on, it, it's not a one-man show. Either we are all in here together, including our daughter. She be, practically became a parent. So we were all in here together, or uh, it's not going to work out. So that kind of bonded us even more closer. Actually, we didn't really know that, I mean, we, we had no idea that we had so much of um, uh, patience and so much of uh, we're stronger together like this. And uh, I'm so sorry. You all are so wonderful, but I have to wrap this up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So there's a lot to learn here. Yes. Intention, desire, discipline, uh, dreams, marry the right person, that's a really a good one, and find answers. As you saw this, and they research, they research, they, uh, 20 calls to a doctor, that's mm -hmm. impressive. Uh, never say, they can, nobody says no to you, I can see that. Go out, be kind to someone you know and someone you don't know. I'll see you back here next time for another wonderful interview. Thank you. To contact Junia, send her an email at info at juniadone.com. For more information, program schedules, and news about future guests, go to www.juniadone.com. Thanks for joining us. See you next time for Uncommon Sense with Junia Doan. Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you.